that. Eh, mm -mm. Mm. He's a rock. I hope I didn't miss anything. You know what I mean? Uh, let's check the uh, check the news here. Five days ago, I returned from my vacation. <laughs> what a joke! Oh my god, I'm really late. Oh boy, I gotta get back to work. Take these off. Look professional. Here we go. Professional. Professional time. Hey everybody, welcome back to Just Blazer Programming. Today we're going to be discussing the render tree. The render tree is something that is very important in Blazor because that is how everything works on what you see on the browser. So it's the equivalent of the virtual DOM. In fact, there's some extra, there's something else on top of it called the incremental DOM that we're going to go into. And I'm going to show you exactly how all that works with a very nice example that I found online that I will have in the description for you if you want to make your own example with it. So. I'll also tell you that, uh, you know, there's actually a little bit of tweaking you got to do in order to make it work because it, I think it's a bit out of date. But once you do that, you will actually see how the browser, uh, how the Blazor handles the document object model on the browser. So without further ado, let's get started on my first, you know, video coming back from my vacation. So let's get started. There we go. So on screen, what we have here is um is a blazer app tutorial that i created so i'm not gonna take credit for this actually i just implemented it in my blazer server product um i'm gonna put a link in where i got this tutorial because i believe it is a very clear example of how the render tree is working so don't worry i'll have that for you there and the only thing that i will say before i get started is that when you do work with it uh add the button that it tells you to add on top of the rendered body and make sure you have it in a div. If not, it's not going to show for you. So that's the only real issue I had with this tutorial. I think it might be a smidge out of date, but uh, do a little bit of tweaking. It was able to work for me. So if you're having issues, that's probably going to be the, the main issue. So let's talk about DOMs real quick before I get started on the render tree. So the DOM is basically the document object model here. So basically anything on screen that you see on your browser, that is the DOM. So we're just going to go show you what it looks like in the background. This is what you'll see. You've never done web app development before, you probably won't be familiar with the inspector. The inspector in the Google browser or some variation of it in some other browsers, really, really important to see what's actually being shown on screen. So if you're not familiar with it or this is your first time looking at it, please remember to use this, uh, this, this dev tool. So you go right click, inspect, and boom, there you are. You get to see the actual guts of your browser in this case. Now, this, what you see here is the DOM for all intents and purposes. Like I know, relax, just chill. I, I, I get it. For all intents and purposes, this is the DOM. Now, what used to happen is that, let's say when you're using something like jQuery, you use jQuery in order to manipulate the DOM in order to give you those nice like animations or if you want to do something that only changes what you see without making the uh, data callbacks or whatever. So the difference between Razor and React is the fact that if you ever want to update the page, you have to do um, API calls and such in order to get back information. And now we'll update the page every single time, which was very, very slow and intensive. By the same token, um, to vert you, you could manipulate stuff on screen with JavaScript, but it was very CPU intensive and slow. However, you didn't have to do all that data callback stuff. You just had to make sure that the logic was correct and it did what you wanted. Now, with React and Angular, they introduced something called the virtual DOM. Now, the virtual DOM is a way of trying to circumnavigate that whole issue of the CPU intensive changes to the browser. So whenever you wanted to change something, you want to press a button so you can change, say, a color or whatever. Um, you didn't have to go into the browser, look for what you're looking for, or whatever, and then change it there. The virtual DOM does stuff uh, in the background to allow that process to be a lot easier and to be more abstracted from the HTML. Uh, in other words, it basically has a copy or it basically has a copy in memory of whatever the change is going to be and then applies the change after the fact so that it doesn't have to do all the processes every single time. Something along those lines. I know that there's probably a better explanation to how this is done, but I believe that going into the weeds into it is not very worth it, but just it. Just think of it as an abstraction created to save CPU and to make the browser fast, a faster experience, which is why React and Angular took off and other stuff did not. So on top of this virtual DOM uh, stuff here that allows us to make our HTML changes 
faster when we want to re-render them. Um, there's also something called the incremental DOM, which is what Blazor uses. So it takes this uh, concept and takes it one step further um, by having something called the incremental DOM. So the incremental DOM works off of the, like the virtual DOM, basically, that it works with the memory of the browser. So I'm not really sure where it is in the browser if I inspect it. I assume it's going to be wherever the memory stuff is. So I don't know where, where this exists in the browser specifically, but it's going to be somewhere there. But what happens is that whenever there is a change to be done, the incremental DOM uh, takes the old change and then compares it to whatever the new change is. And then if nothing, if, there, if the old change has something that remains the same even here, it doesn't update that. What happens is that only the changes that are found to be changes get updated. So like a git, like an example in git is that if you modify a file, and you add lines to it, you're not changing the whole file, you're modifying just those lines in the file. So yeah, like the whole memory and all that stuff, uh, you, know, you are technically changing it completely and the signature of it, if you do a a, a ch mod on it, it's gonna change because it's changed. But for all intents and purposes, all you're doing is actually changing whatever want to change and leave whatever uh, you did not touch there. So that's the same, uh, the same example that you see here. And we're going to see this in action. So if you don't know what I was talking about, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here with this example. I thought this was a very nice example that I found online on how the incremental, do, uh, the incremental, uh, the, the incremental DOM is being done here, also known as the, the render tree. So that is what's happening. In my case, we're, we'll, we will look at this. So again, if you want to do this, I have the, the link in the description for this tutorial example. I did not write this. I, I'm not the one who owns that site, but I thought it was a very clear example of how we could see it. And then the only change you got to do is put this button on top of the render body with a div. Everything else is the same. So all the stuff is just copy pasted in there. And I even put it within the, um, uh, home index. So I even put the uh, the example in the index.ch, which is so. What we have here is a uh, my is a small little change. We want to add a list of objects here, one, two, and three. So when we set the values of it, we're gonna be changing the HTML directly. So when that button gets pressed. We it trigger the jQuery that's associated to that button. Back to it. We're gonna trigger this, and it's gonna do a bunch of element changes directly onto the DOM. And then when that happens, we're gonna press another button, this one, that will change the data. So what's gonna happen is gonna add data down here, and it's gonna I think modify these two things, so that it all is different. But we will see the incremental DOM in action because if we go here, it's going to keep some data that was changed prior. So if you don't know, you'll see what I mean. Right now, if we go there, the list only has one, two, and three. Uh, one, two being the string versions of the, you know, the way you spell them. And then the number three at the bottom, the third one. So we're going to press the set values button. Run this again. And now we have inside of the list, um, we added this attribute original value and it will equal to one, two, and three. So all it did was um, take whatever this was called and add it up here so that you could see the change in action. And then the last thing we're gonna do is press this button and this will change the data on screen. So now when we go back to it, you see we have one, two, three, four. So we, everything changed. So, as you can see in the incremental DOM, the only thing that was actually changed was what we saw was being changed, which is um, the actual um, the values of one and two from the string version of one and two. And then we added another one called four. So there was no extra data. There's no extra like logic processes happening here. All it was doing was comparing the differences between what is the attribute versus the new attributes coming in. So this is an example of the incremental DOM. I thought it was a very nice and clear way of showing uh, that this is actually happening in Blazor. So now you have proof that this is what's going on and that this is how it works in the background. 
So with that in mind, how does this help you understand the render tree more? Well, now you know that if you are making changes to the render tree, um, whatever was in there prior that you did not make a change to will stay there or will in or theoretically will stay there um, in a perfect world because obviously whenever you do stuff using the rendering in Blazor, things can get iffy. But in a perfect world, your uh, original values will remain the same. So in this case, the original values being those classes that we saw or the attributes, not really sure, um, within the list elements. And then the only thing that's going to change are going to be what is it that you want to change. In this case, would be the names with our, the, the values within the list. That's not the original value. That's the, uh, the value of that you see. So that's why when we added number four here, it did not get one of these because it did not have one. It didn't exist when the comparison was done. It was simply added into it. That is what the logic, uh, that's what the change data logic did. It wasn't anything fancy or crazy, but I believe this actually showed you that the incremental DOM is working as expected and that when you do work with it, this is how you should uh, prepare yourself when you start rendering things. Now, what can you do? So other things with the render tree, yes, there are more complicated ways of doing the render tree. In fact, there are ways that are helpful to you, especially when you're working with JavaScript or something with JavaScript. This is all JavaScript, it's jQuery, jQuery, JavaScript. And I think the change data is not JavaScript if I go into it. Yeah, the change data is just uh, something that Blazor implements. So even though we created a JavaScript call through jQuery here to change the data, and then we uh, triggered it with the C sharp version of it or the C sharp um, function, the incremental DOM took what, did it, what it had to do regardless of the language. So that's another thing that is another uh, thing you should take note of that regardless if you're working with JavaScript or with the C sharp um, and the Blazor, it's working as expected. So do the comparison and then it'll find whatever the differences are and then merge the, the two as uh, the way that it should be. I know the render tree is a bit of a, it feels daunting because I've seen, you know, when you actually do manipulate it and start writing code for it, uh, there are things you have to take into account. But as long as you understand this at the fundamental level for a render tree and you understand that this is how Blazor handles rendering, then I think this will help you move forward with your other lifecycle component related functions because now you understand that when changes are made not every change uh, overrides another unless that's what you're working with so render tree does do something in the back with the browser it does a comparison does all this stuff it's still cpu intensive so it still takes some time to do it but it's not as cpu intensive as doing it directly onto the uh dom so if you are still interested in learning more about the lifecycle components, I got the lifecycle component video that I showed you in the beginning. So if you want to make this make more sense to you, I check that out. And if not, then, you know, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. You know, videos coming out regularly from now on because no more vacation, sadly.